Hello Naughty Steppers, it's Connor Whitmore here again with another video on the Naughty Step channel and it's time to give you a few extra naughty reviews for the month of April 2018. Stuff that I wasn't able to review in full but that I thought was still worth sharing with you guys, uh, gonna give my opinions on them, maybe introduce you to something you hadn't heard before. Don't forget that these are shorter because there is so much to get through, particularly in this video, so I'll just be identifying my main points with each one. Stuff released on the 27th of April and after will not be reviewed in this instalment, but the next one. In fact, a couple of releases from this video are from right at the end of March. And the releases are covered in alphabetical order by way of artist name or the name of the record label if it's a compilation. And so kicking off this instalment, we have the newest EP from Ace Aura, released on 99 Lives, Exodus. This EP is a very good example of how to bring the musical and the heavy sides of dubstep production together. I love how the introduction, with its twinkly aesthetic, melts right into the title track Exodus. And that second drop of Lost, which comes in at 1 minute 42, honestly one of my favourites of the year so far, lovely swing to it, and the synths are deployed expertly. It's a succession of pretty hard-hitting and grating, yet simultaneously sparkly drops that give this EP a real glow and appeal. It's also interesting to see how Eric brings his Christian faith into the EP every now and then, a holy contrast to the heavy drops, but it works. A little rough around the edges at points in terms of some of the sounds and the transitions between different sections, but overall I'd say this thing is full of variety and with a lot of good ideas, if you like Chimes music, then this one is definitely for you. Great moody vibe to this album from Azide here. Instrumental and vocal come together really well to create that subtly haunting vibe. At times a bit ritualistic sounding, luring you into its darkness with that fat bass running throughout to bring you in even further. Bit of a Suicide Boys feel to it at times, to be honest, it's properly murky. Runs the risk of being a bit samey, but honestly I just love that style and I'm happy to be in that lull for its entirety. Neat, contained, well managed, just a solid, minimalistic dark album. This is a good selection of originals, giving some newcomers a chance on this big stage such as Tigers and Detrace. For me one of the more solid Black Friday releases, varied across the four tracks. From the squelchy Tigers track to the straight up explosive sounds from Woolly and Detrace which is probably my favourite one of the bunch, to the more stripped back and hollow to Soaky tune and the classically filth ridden jumpy number from Midnight Tyrannosaurus. Yeah, this is pretty solid and even though you've probably all heard it already, I'm going to recommend it anyway just in case there is anyone out there that hasn't. The fourth and last in the Unity Project series from Culprit is probably just as hit and miss as the others I'd say. Some truly amazing bits dipping in and out of slower and faster tempos from experimental to dubstep, drum and bass and glitch. And probably one of the more conceptual EPs you're likely to hear this year with really meaty, detailed sound design throughout. But just some of the ideas aren't as direct and exact as others here, something which for me runs through the series as a whole, as mentioned. Definitely worth listening to these EPs if you want an immersive musical experience, the songs do well to subsume you somewhat. But yeah, unless you want your mind to be taken this way and that, then I wouldn't say these EPs are for you. Not the naughtiness you would usually associate with this channel, but there's a very consistent rhythm to this EP from Derin Barmer. Each song just plugs away, nice little effects and sounds throughout, nothing overtly flashy here. Points where these tracks are just pining for something a little more to take them over the edge. But I think his intention was to keep them like this, steady delivery with no huge drops or breaks or anything in between. I particularly enjoyed the oozy tribal feel to the track Facts, as well as the jabbing, interjecting notes to the kickback VIP. I've reviewed the likes of Beard Thug and Shift Mojo on this channel before, and if you enjoy that sort of stuff then you will definitely enjoy this EP. These are just vintage, brutal, mind-melting tunes from Figure to be honest, and if you like his style usually then you will enjoy this EP, plain and simple. He brings his wild and wacky form of dubstep to the table, but without as many horrifying vocal samples, and with a bit of a modern rhythm influence, notably on the track Tornado. Adapting his style a little bit for this Disciple release, which I doubt will be too strong in his future Monsters volumes. But yeah, it's decent. 
Far from my favourite stuff of his, but it will certainly be loved by a lot of people out there looking for some unerringly terrifying bass music. Really, really solid drum and bass EP here from Frequency. Love the pull of these sounds, the interaction between them. Amazing force and drive to this thing. Am I saying that right, Frequency? I suppose it could be Frequency, but I think the K suggests it's the former. Definitely has its lighter, less convincing moments amidst the more seizing stuff, but overall, I'd say this is a really good listen from beginning to end. Holds your attention so well, real variety to the percussion. If you like drum and bass, then I couldn't recommend this EP enough. Now, I really enjoy when a different genre take is had on a classic, but the last two on this remix EP, they just don't work for me. The VIP from Hero Bust is the only drastic change that I would say works really well. That drop was so unexpected, it gets you right in the gut. I can imagine Venom jamming to this tune, you know, the Marvel character. Anyone feel me on that? I feel like with this original in particular, the filth is such a vital part of that song that you have to do that element justice in a remix. Which is only really going to come about in a dubstep remix, in whatever sub format you please, whether it be rhythm, bro step, vomit step, etc. And that's why the Monks and Graphite and E-Craze remixes work so well. They incorporate the underwater sliminess from the original into their edits. So yeah, this remix EP starts great. Not sure about the ending. Film score death step music here from Havel, which you really have to be prepared for. I mean, this thing sucks the soul right out of you. Comes in at five tracks, but is over half an hour long. I mean, this thing will really leave its mark on you, I can promise that. So unforgiving and remorseless, completely drawn out and enduring, almost forces you to like it for how much of a challenge it is. Try it out and see how you feel at the end of it, but prepare yourself. Also, shout out Interval Audio, new up and coming label, doing great things for the dubstep scene. Now, this Matroda EP is a difficult one. I've liked a lot of his stuff before, but this EP, it just doesn't do that much for me. The general feel to it is good. There's a real thickness and weight to his sound, but the ideas themselves just don't wow me, really. It's another one of those where too many sequences seem spur of the moment, half-baked and without a real purpose or aim. The final track, The Drive, has its moments, particularly in the drops, where the dubstep sounds and the vocal come together on top of the house backdrop. I also really enjoy the track Boom Bap, the cheeky vocal sample, the surrounding percussion and the interaction between different elements. But that was released a while back, and so in its entirety, this EP doesn't provide that much that is both ear-catching and new. He's produced some stuff in the past that has honestly been game-changing in its aggressiveness, but that just seems to be lacking here. Not to say that he has to change now, it's his style, he must do what he wants with it, but I certainly know which stuff of his I prefer. This is a good mini compilation, probably my favourite multi-track release from Monster Cat in a fair while. Really good mix of songs here, from the vulnerable approach taken by Coven, to the thumping electro banger from Stonebank, the dainty and delicate slippy tune, and the warm and fuzzy drum and bass song from Protostar. And the track from Pegboard Nerds, which for me was a real hark back to past stuff of theirs that I've loved. Nostalgic vibes. Undeniably heavier than a lot of other stuff that Monster Cat have put out recently. So yeah, check it out. If you want a challenging collection of songs to really sink your teeth into, then this album from Onumi really pushes the listener out of their comfort zone in a multitude of ways. Through sound and mood and tempo and structure. Similar to the Havel EP in that respect actually, it forces you to find the good through its complexity. Jarring on the surface, but with so much to each track, unsure of itself in the most intriguing and provocative way. Torment of the brain music, if that makes sense, all over the place but really captures the fleeting nature of our minds, in my opinion. Certainly heavy in its roots, so that's where its appeal comes from for lovers of dark electronic music. Another very decent mini compilation here, this time from house label Pinnacle Collective. Each track exhibiting its own take on the dark form of house that has come into popularity over the last couple of years with the development of G House and Bass House in particular. Some more in your face and others a bit more subtle in what they want to deliver, but all worth a listen, check them out.
Another very solid drum and bass EP here from QZB, but it definitely takes the listener down softer, lighter routes. More emphasis is had here on the space vacated by the percussion rather than the sheer force of the overall sound, as is the case with the Frequency EP. Resultantly, it comes across as quite a spacious, atmospheric, intricate collection of songs, and they're constructed oh so well. My favourite probably being the frenetic track Nobunaga, a crazy amount of sounds brought together so cleanly. But this is a great EP, I fully recommend it to anyone looking to be engulfed in some very pointed, yet soothing drum and bass songs. This collaborative EP between House Stalwarts, Charmy and Malar is for me both great and unsatisfactory in equal measure. Plenty of brilliant parts to these five tracks, introduction included, but also moments which just let those bits of greatness down. For example, I don't see any connection between the intro and the drop to Summer 99. The intro is amazing. The drop... Where does that come from? So yeah, what I think I'm saying is that all these songs have their good bits, but as holes, they're not all that much. It's mostly the introductions that I'm a fan of, and not so much the drops, to be honest. Still, we must be happy that these guys came together in the first place to produce a multi-track project, and I must say that I find myself enjoying it more with each listen. What more can be said about Troy Boy? He's becoming a legend of the trap genre. This EP is spicy as fuck. Go and listen to it. At points not as vibrant as some of his other stuff, it still has that incredible attention to detail and remarkable clarity and freshness to his sound. Wickedest Bounce being a favourite of mine across the six tracks, I think. I like them all, but this one is especially fruity in its progression. Even dips into some dubstep flavoured synths at points to give it that extra naughty gleam. Just does exactly what it says on the tin, it's pure vibes, very, very hard to dislike. And last, but by certainly no means least, we have the new Tainan EP, released on Never Say Die, and again, this one is very interesting for me. He is a musician who clearly has two distinct styles to his production, one more showy, the other more subdued and low-key and haunting, which comes across mostly in his remixes. And as expected, with these originals he opts for the former, with six almost entirely outright bangers, which to me seem a little bit haphazard in their formulation. I love the array of sounds on show here and the energy to it from track one to six, but there doesn't seem to be that much harmony between the individual ideas. There's a lot going on in these songs. Maybe he could have cut some of them down a little or even had fewer tracks on the EP. I do really enjoy the spontaneity of it though, the crazy directions it goes off in, I think that's where it gets its linearity from, its manic disjointedness. Definitely worth a listen for anyone who enjoys dark electronic music. This EP has a lot to give, just the majority of it doesn't cohere too well for me personally. And so that brings the April 2018 volume of the monthly Extra Naughties Roundup to a close. Thank you very much, and as always, for tuning in. A fair few releases in April 2 that I wasn't too keen on but that you might enjoy. Uh, special mentions if you will, so we got Teddy Killers, Gyoza, Blue, OG Nixon. I'll put those all in the description down below. A pretty decent month for the dark electronic music scene overall. We also had EPs from the likes of Rusko, Chime, Jarvis, we had the Mephius album, all of which I reviewed on this channel in the last 30 days or so. But with regards to the EPs and albums discussed in this video, which ones did you enjoy? Which ones hadn't you heard of before? Are there any that I left out? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this roundup video, then be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, hitting the notification bell along the way so you can be notified whenever I upload to the Naughty Step channel. Next to my head there should be a link to another Extra Naughties video from the past if you're looking for some more dark electronic music tunage to explore. Links to all of the projects discussed in this video are in the description box down below, as well as all the Naughty Step social media accounts, so get following and liking those if you haven't already. And lastly, if it's naughty, then you know guys, so be sure as always to keep it naughty and stay safe. And I shall see you folks in the next one. Sada.